So Microsoft Lists makes it really easy to turn your basic data capture processes into something that can be done digitally and on a self-service basis by your team members. And with a little power automate in the background, you can create pretty sophisticated tools, like the cut down CRM you can build in 30 minutes I showed you in this video here. But for certain processes like expense reporting, issue tracking or HR requests, you might not want all of your users to see what others are submitting, which may make you think that you need something more complicated than lists and start looking into building custom apps in a platform like Power Apps instead. But actually, all of the SharePoint goodness that's under the hood of lists gives you everything you need to fulfill this requirement at a basic level. Let's take a look how. So here I am in the Microsoft 365 portal for one of my users, and I'm just going to jump into Microsoft Lists, and I'm going to create a new list from a template. So let's say I want a, uh, an issue tracker, and I'm going to use this template here, create my list. And by default, I'm the only person who can get into this list. But I, I can go ahead and through the list settings, I can change the permissions on my list. And I can grant permissions on it. So say I want to add Adele in and I want to add Megan in as users of this list. I can choose what permission level they're going to have. Um, so for this purpose, I'm going to choose contribute. I'm not going to send them an email invite and I'm just going to share this. And now if I jump back a couple of steps back to my list, I'm just going to add a couple of items here. So I'm going to say item one, and that's the only one that I need to add in. And I'm going to put in item two. So these are Pravdeep's items. So here's Megan's view of the list. And you can see that I see item one and item two here. And I'm gonna have Megan create item three. And I'm just gonna call this Megan's so that it's very, very clear whose it is. And I've just done exactly the same thing from Adele's view of the list. So you can see that every user can see every item. So what if I wanted a situation where Pradeep or the owners of this list could see everything, but I only want Megan to be able to see Megan's items and I only want Adele to be able to see Adele's items? Well, this is really simple to do. So back in Pradeep's view of the list, I'm gonna come up to my gear. I'm gonna to go to list settings, and then I'm gonna to go to advanced settings. And then you see here under item level permissions, I have two different options, read access and create and edit access. And all I'm gonna do here is I'm going to change read all items to read items that were created by the user. And I'm gonna change create and edit all items to create items and edit items that were created by the user. And I'm gonna jump down to the bottom and select okay. So now jumping back to Megan's view of this list, I'm gonna hit refresh. And you can see that now Megan can only see Megan's item. And she could create another item here. So I'm gonna create an item five. And she can create that. She can go in and she can edit her items if she wants to. but she can only see her own items. And you can see from Adele's view, she can only see her own items as well. So say we want more than Pradeep to be able to see all the items in the list. How would we achieve that? So back in Pradeep's view, I'm going to go to the gear icon again. I'm gonna to go to list settings. I'm gonna to go to permissions for this list. And I want Megan to be the other person that can see all of the items. So I'm going to select her and I'm going to go to edit user permissions. And instead of contribute, I'm going to give her D 
design access. So you can see she's now got design. So jumping back into Megan's view of the list, I'm going to hit refresh. And you can see she can now see everything. So using this very easy setting, you can make it so different users can see different things in your list. They can still continue to add and edit items, um, but uh, they can only see the ones that they have access to unless you give them a higher level of permission on your list, in which case they can see everything. Now, just a, a note on this, I have created this list in Prabdeep's OneDrive. And if you're going to use lists to create something that's going to be a, a business system that you're going to use across your business, the best practice is not to create the list in your OneDrive, but either create that list in a team, in a group, or in SharePoint site, um, so that if that OneDrive gets deleted, for example, the user leaves the company, um, you're not going to lose or potentially lose the ability to manage that list that you've uh, created for that business process. So in this case, this was just an example. If you're using this to create something you're going to use across your company, then please do use a group to do it. I think these simple settings open a lot of options for how you might use lists in any organization. And if you're in an environment without add-on Power Platform licensing, this can represent the most cost-effective data source for any automation or reporting projects you might be planning. The true power of Microsoft 365 is in tools like lists that can be a springboard to digitally transforming processes, departments, or your entire organization. If this video has been of value to you, then please do give it a like, and if you enjoy content like this, then please do subscribe to the channel. And until next time, bye bye.